purpose. So Acts 17 is where we're going to be. Um, I want to just talk to you really quickly. Well, I, was, I when I saw that it was Labor Day, um, yeah, my phone is blowing up. Y'all are a blessing. That was a dumb idea, Joel. All right, Acts 17. I want to talk to you just for the last couple minutes of class about why change matters. Why change matters from Acts chapter number 17. The Bible says this. Um, now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonius, Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, there where it was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scripture, opening and alleging, alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas, and of the devout Greeks a great multitude, and of the chief women not a few. But the Jews, which believed not, moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company, and set all the city on an uproar, and assaulted the house of Jason, and sought to bring, out to the, bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Whom Jason hath received, and all these do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. Why change matters. Let's spend the last couple minutes talking about that, and we will pray and ask the Lord to help us. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I pray that you'd help us over the next couple of weeks to be changed from the inside out. God, I ask you to help us to see the effect of commitment in our spiritual life. Lord, it's so discouraging to see how we can become so committed to everything else. And yet very rarely do we commit ourselves to the change promised in your word. I ask you to give me wisdom as I speak. Give me strength in the words to say. In your name we pray. Amen. When we talk about change, what I find so interesting about change is that everyone is for it as long as they agree with it. Um, everyone is for change as long as they agree with it. Politically, you see people all the time. No political person ever stands up and says, all right, I'm running on the platform of not changing anything. I think everything's really good, so we're just going to leave it alone. Okay? They would lose. Okay? They would not win if that was their platform. Most of us, you can identify an area of your life that you would like to change. You could maybe step back and say, yes, I got a bank account text today and I want to change what is in my bank account, all right? I want to change maybe my diets or my exercise. I want to change maybe my relationships. I want to change maybe something else. I want to change uh, maybe an area of my life that no one knows about. I want to change even maybe my mental health and maybe the mental side of things. We all are for change as long as we agree with it. But here's the truth is very rarely do we put the habits in place to actually change something in our lives. Just this past week while I was flying, um, actually I wasn't flying, I was sitting in an airport just looking at people. I was listening to a podcast and I heard a guy say, show me your habits and I'll show you your future. Show me your habits and I'll show you your future. Basically it's meaning this, that what you are doing today is a picture of where you will be in the future. And sadly, while we can step back, and I think that it's mainly because the devil doesn't fight it as much as what he does spiritually, but we'll step back and we'll put good, healthy financial habits in place. We'll, we'll put good, healthy relational habits in place. We'll put good, healthy health uh, habits in place. And yet very rarely do we ever take the time to put good, healthy spiritual habits in place. And yet that is exactly how we see change. We see change occur as we commit to that which we know we already should be doing. And so here's what I want you to see. is sometimes we can identify why change matters in every other area, except for some reason we're content to stay stuck in our spiritual lives. <coughs> and in Acts chapter number 17, I want you to notice four areas where change matters. The first one is this, is change matters in your life. Change matters in your life. Isn't it interesting that in Acts 17, Paul is the person who is preaching? Paul, who had been someone who killed and murdered and persecuted other people, was now changing the world around him. I don't know that I ever really get over the life of Paul. Can you imagine rolling into a city where you had maybe persecuted someone? Where you had killed and maybe even beaten the head of a household, the head of a Christian household, and now you have to roll into that town and minister to those people? Can you imagine the burden and the pressure that he felt when he, when he saw that? But what you see is that change occurred in his life 
and as a result of it, it spilled out secondly into the lives of others because change matters to you. And here's what sometimes we use to get us over the hump. Is there are things in my life that I know that I need to change? But sometimes it takes me looking past myself and to my wife and my, my kids and those around me, those that I'm called to lead, and I think to myself, if I can't do this for myself, I should be able to do it for someone else. If you don't want to experience spiritual change for yourself, first of all, let me encourage you to challenge yourself in that thinking. But secondly, let me also encourage you to look at those around you. Could it be that the reason why your relationships and your friendships exist at this level is because there is no one to show to them that there is another level? Could it be that the reason that your, the spirituality of your family is here is because there's never been anybody who's actually tried to go to the next level? And you, as a child of God and as someone who is a leader, it doesn't matter where you're at, it doesn't matter who's following you, you are a leader in some sort. You have people who are looking to you. You should want to go to another level spiritually to help those around you. So first of all, change helps you or changes your life. Change matters to those around you. But then thirdly, change matters to the world. They say this in verse number six. He says, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. It's a sad day in America when we step back and when Christians walk onto the scene, it's almost as if we're irrelevant. It's almost as if we have no proof of what we have done. We have, we have no credibility. Why is that? Is it because God has changed in who he is? Or is it because we have changed in practicing change within our own lives? God is the same God of Scripture. Sometimes we, we like to almost idolize the people of Scripture. When James chapter number 4 says, uh, when it refers to Elijah who prayed, it says he was a man of like passions. Now that doesn't mean that he probably liked college football like I do, okay? But he was a man of like passions, meaning he was just a normal person and yet he saw God do something great. Why is that? Because they were focused on changing what was around them. And we can step back and we can say, well, if we had a different person in office, then the world would change. You would probably be right. Every person changes everything when they get in office. If we, had, if we had a different belief structure on this hot topic issue, then we would be changed. If we did this, then it would change. If we, if we acted like this, it would change. And here's what I want to argue with you. If you change, then those around you change. And as those around you change, that is when the world changes. I can't remember who said it, but someone mentioned this, that the goal should not be to get Americans saved, but to save America. Meaning this, that when you as a child of God say, I want to help someone around me. I want, to, I want them to be changed. That starts by you sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and seeing them saved through that and changed as a result of that. So first of all, change matters to your life. Change matters to others. Change matters to the world. But then I want you to see this, that change matters to Jesus Christ. I want you to look at verse number 7. Listen to the, um, the indictment that these people give on the disciples. He says, Whom Jason hath received, and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. Does your life and your testimony show other people that there is another king? Does your life and your testimony show other people that there is another king? How many of you ever heard someone say uh, that um, cash is king or something like that? I think Dave Ramsey is the one who always says, cash is king, cash is king, all right? We talk about the things that are king in our life, okay? Well, cash is king. Well, well my job is king. And the truth is, is that we have many kings other than Jesus Christ in our world. In my prayer, I made a statement of something that is referenced in the introduction of your notebook, and that is this. I don't think that commitment is lacking in today's society. 
I don't think we are more. You hear all these old people, uh, they're like, oh, there's nobody wants to commit to anything now. I don't look in this room and think that everyone in this room is just super uncommitted. Here's what I think, is that I think that we've just overcommitted ourselves to too many things. We've committed ourselves to social media. You've committed your, yourself to maybe a healthy life. You've committed yourself to a good budget. You've committed yourself to being friends with everybody. You've committed yourself to a job. You've committed yourself to, to helping in the church. You've committed yourself to maybe coaching a little league team. You've committed yourself to this. You've committed yourself to that. And so when it comes to our commitment for God, it's not that we're uncommitted. It's just that our commitment is stretched so paper thin that it almost feels like that we have nothing left to commit. And here's what I would encourage you with, that at some point you must identify who the king is of your life and arrange your commitments based off of your king. Because to Jesus, the only thing that matters is that he be king of your life and that he change you from within. And so I know that that was short today, but I, uh, I wanted to make sure that you were comfortable with the notebook so that now that everybody has my phone number, they don't have to send me a thousand questions like, oh, on page number 17, it says, well, just figure it out, all right? Read harder, okay? Um, but I want you to grab one of those, and here's what we wanna, I want to do. I want to close this in a word of prayer. And I as we close, here's what I want to ask you. I want you to consider for just a moment about what God needs to change in your life. What does God need to change in your life? Maybe there's an area that you just need him to hone in on and you need to say, Lord, I'm giving that to you. As we pray, I want the Holy Spirit to do the work in your life.